This is a quick follow up to my last video where we talked about promise concurrency in JavaScript. You guys left a lot of cool comments that uh, gave me uh, some interesting ideas. And so I wanted to kind of wrap all of that into this little update. So the first and probably most important thing is that there is actually a bug in this map promises implementation. And that has to do with the way we are assigning to a results at an index and then checking to see if we have all of the results based on the length. There's an implicit dependency here on the idea that the promises always resolve in the same order as they appear in our args array. And that may not always be the case. I put together a simple example of this here. I've kind of pared down our square function here, but the main idea is we're gonna have five values in this. If we're on number three, we're gonna have this set time up before one second, otherwise just a hundred milliseconds. So the number three, result here is going to end much later than the rest of them. And if we run this, we have our array here and we have five spots in this array, but only four of them are filled because we assigned our fifth element here to the array. We still have an empty spot at spot four here, but the length of this array is five. And so it looked like we were complete. This is a bug that thankfully is pretty easy to fix. Instead of depending on results.length, let's actually have a counter for that. So we can let count equals zero, maybe a better name for this uh, would be um, completed, or we could use the JavaScript term settled. And what we can do here is right above our set immediate, we can increment settled. And then down here, instead of waiting for results.length to equal args.length, args.length can equal settled. So and I guess, technically, I kind of want to reverse this, we'll say the settled equal args dot length. So now if we run this again, what we should see is we are waiting for all of our values to be available, all five values, uh, because now we're actually counting the results and not just the length of the results array. So that's the one bug that we have. Now, a couple people talked about set immediate, whether this is the right choice. We could also uh, use process dot uh, next tick, I believe, to make sure that this actually runs um, immediately, uh, set immediate actually doesn't run it immediately, it runs it um, at the kind of the beginning of the next uh, event loop, I guess. Um, this is this is an area that I need to brush up on. So however, some people pointed out that we probably don't even need to do it this way. I think the challenge that I was trying to get around, which I think I actually did poorly, was that if we call next like this, then it's possible that if next throws an error, we might not be set up to handle this properly. However, I I don't even think we actually did set up for that. So I'm going to say I'm going to look into that more and probably um, figure out exactly what goes on there. But I think we could probably just call next here. Or if you wanted to be um, really safe, do process.next tick. If you don't care so much about the exact timing and you want this to be browser compatible, uh, set timeout next works. Set timeout, obviously, usually we pass a timeout to this. But notice this is an optional parameter. And I think it defaults to zero, which is kind of the same thing as set immediate. The other thing mentioned in the comments was that maybe it's weird to pass args and a callback. Why not just take an array of functions that resolve a promise? And I actually kind of like that. It feels like a little bit more of a, a pure version of this. Let's copy this and just paste it here. We'll just call this map promises too. And this would kind of just look a little bit simpler. We could have an array of callbacks like this. Anywhere where we have args, we can replace that with callbacks.length. So we got callbacks.length there and also callbacks.length uh, here. And then callback equals uh, callbacks at our index. And then we don't have any args, so we're not passing anything in there. We're just calling it directly. Um, maybe we just don't even need to create a variable here. Maybe we can do callbacks at index and cut out the middleman. I think this is probably, yeah, going to result in the same idea. We can maybe change our example here to do this a little bit differently. Let's see, instead of, well, I guess we would just kind of do our function map here. So, so if we wanted to call uh, promise maps too, we could just do args.map args, and we can just return a get square dot 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 a. And so now if we run this, we should see um, callbacks at index is not um, oh, well, no, that should be an array, we're going to do a bit of live debugging here. And Oh, we're actually calling these already. That's, that's not what I want to do. Why are we calling those? Oh, I see this needs to return a function. Yeah, that returns a promise. Cool. There we go. And so now yes, there we go. So we logged those at the beginning. But then I do like this pattern a little bit better, because it really makes this map promises function do one thing well, which is it takes a set of promise generators, essentially, and uh, resolves them concurrently. 
this this is probably a nicer pattern that I think makes a, a little bit more sense. You can kind of push the argument management behavior to another piece of your code, which um, which I like a lot. The one other thing that came up in the comments is what would this look like in TypeScript? And it's actually not too hard at all. So let's copy Matt Promises and rename this to a TypeScript file. A couple of things we want to do here with some generic arguments. So let's talk about args first. Args is an array. Each item in the array is represents a set of arguments for the callback in this version anyway. So let's say we want to have an args type and args is supposed to be an array of args. So then args here itself can probably just extend um, some array. It doesn't really matter what it is. We'll just say it has to extend uh, an array. We then need a type for our callback here. And this is going to extend a function that takes a set of arguments that matches this args array, but we're going to spread that so they're individual arguments. And then we expect it to return a promise a promise that returns or resolves to, I should say, a T value. And T can just be whatever we want. So we'll just throw that up there. And so then this is going to be callback. Now we need this result type, which is pretty straightforward. Our result type here can be type uh, result. And we have a T and an E. Maybe we'll let the E, which is our error case, default to unknown. And so then we kind of have two sides to this union. We have status uh, fulfilled with a value of t, or we have status of rejected with a reason of e. And so now this results array here, we can type as an array of results of t. And now those type errors clean up. Um, now, I don't have a, a full TypeScript environment set up here for this project, so we're not getting with resolvers. But I think you can kind of see that this is actually pretty straightforward. Now, let's copy this. And let's come take a look at our callbacks only version. So in the callbacks only version of this, we don't need the args, do we? We just need callback here, which itself should not take any arguments. It just returns a promise of T. And then uh, if we look at what we've got going on here, the main thing is this result stuff. We'll do the same thing here where we can say this is an array of a result of T. We do seem to have an interesting problem here with value. This is value has an implicit any and it looks like reason here also has an implicit any. What's that full error say? A better type may be inferred from usage. That's interesting. Okay, let's see what happens if we create callbacks index function. Does this, well, why would it be any? Oh, sorry, callbacks should be an array. Yeah, now callback should be an array. Uh, yeah, 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 there we go. And then now this is a T and this can be any nice. Okay, typing this is pretty straightforward and it's even easier. I think like the fact that we have a simpler type here when we don't take the arguments kind of points out that this maybe is a better way to do this. We can just have, honestly, we don't even really need this callback type in here. We can just say that this is, uh, I would probably really do this like this and say this is an array of a promise of T, get rid of that. And we really just have T as our only generic. And we don't even need to extend anything. We can just say T is, is something, it doesn't really matter what it is. As long as we have an array of functions that return a promise that resolves to T, we can return an array of T results. So there you go. There's a little bit of feedback. Um, there's a little bit of my feedback to your feedback on my last video. Thank you guys so much for watching. And thank you also for answering the question about what types of videos you'd love to see on this channel. That is really, really helpful for me. So yeah, look for more coming soon. I'll see you around.